Hello everybody, welcome to Trauma Myth. It's a four-part training series. And we're gonna explore the question of, is everything you know about trauma, shifting negative beliefs and emotions wrong? Is there a new paradigm to awaken to? That's, that's the question I want you to hold space for right now. Is there a better way? I work a lot with practitioners. In fact, my private practice is mostly filled with practitioners who are serving others. Chiropractors, acupuncturists, licensed therapists, massage therapists, energy healers, coaches. And what I find and what breaks my heart more than anything is when they and their clients get lost and consumed by the negative emotion and feelings that are presented in a session. And I want to offer that there's a better way to interact with those emotions. There's higher skills that you can develop to improve both your life as well as your work. Hi everybody, I'm Carolyn Everly. I'm a licensed professional counselor. And I'm the founder of a school called Mind Energy Body School of Transformation. And I welcome you here today. What I'd like to explore are four trauma myths. Myths that supposedly work, but I want to help you understand how they don't necessarily hold true in the long run. I want you to explore the question within, within you, is there something that you're doing that could re-wound and re-traumatize clients? I want to explore the question, is there a better way? And I want to talk specifically about the term process work. I've actually come to hate the term, let's process this. Instead, when I work with clients and students, I say, what are we transforming today? Because I don't like processed food, I don't know about you, but processed food for me pulls all the nutrition out of it. I like to transform, I like that whole food. And that's what I feel is the analogy of the difference between what is traditionally known as process work and what I want to teach you about transformation work. And to do that, I want to just a little bit talk about the history of healing and psychotherapy in the past century. Sigmund Freud introduced the concept of psychoanalysis. Carl Jung studied with Freud for a while and then he broke out and he created his own work. And he developed the concept that I absolutely adore and I think is a paradigm shift. It's called the collective consciousness. Other people have made revolutionary changes as well. William Reich brought in the mind-body connection. He started inviting people to look at the body and what's in the body and how does that reflect an emotional state of being. William Reich also introduced the concept of subtle energies. He called it Orgon. But he did it early. Maybe he was a little bit too revolutionary because he was actually put in prison and his books were burned and he actually died in prison just weeks before he was gonna be paroled. So I don't want you to burn my book or put me in prison, but I want to talk more about the role of subtle energies. I want to talk more about a more integrated approach to healing and energy healing. For me, I, I went to energy healers and it was great, but in some ways I was re-traumatized by the emotions the energy brought up. I didn't know how to really work with them and they really weren't talented in guiding. They just aren't trained to deal with deep trauma. And then I went to licensed professional counselors. And I was also processed to death because they didn't understand what was happening at that more subtle level. I want to invite you to consider that there is this better way, a more holistic, all-in-one approach where you can work cognitive behaviorally. You can work somatically through the body. But the glue that holds those together is the subtle energy system. And that subtle energy is, is consciousness. It is the tangible tool that connects the mind with the body. I'm going to say that again because it's really important and I want to invite you to just breathe and pause a second and consider that energy is consciousness and it connects the 
mind with the body. And as you access not only the cognitive behavioral, not only the somatic through the body, but you include the glue of the subtle energy awareness, your whole life can change. In fact, I have to tell you, I really believe in this work because I have seen what has happened with my clients, with myself, and with my students. I've seen divorces become amicable because they became best friends and co-parenting. I've seen cancer transform and heal completely without chemotherapy. I've seen chronic illnesses heal. I've seen depression, anxiety, sleeplessness all get healed. Not because I healed them, because I offered them a new paradigm to consider, a new paradigm to work. So when you are able to use that glue of subtle energy that connects the mind with the body, you then are able to notice when rewounding and re-traumatization is happening in your clients and or yourself, and you get to prevent it. I really am hoping <laughs> to help you understand that negative emotions do not have to be overwhelming. That there can be a tipping point where you actually want to connect to the negative aspects of what's happening in your life because you're so empowered, you're so wise, you know how to transform it. This is what I'm offering to you to consider is possible when you work at that quantum reality level, when you move out of the Newtonian solid physical environment and you open to a new environment. When I took my first meditation retreat. It was a two-week silent retreat. It was in Kathmandu, Nepal. And I sat and I sat and I felt all sorts of crazy making happen in my mind and body. And then all of a sudden, everything disappeared. There was nothing around me except particles of energy. That's when I really started to get curious of how to embrace this new way. And I want you to get curious about how energy can become that tangible tool for awakening and it can differentiate a whole new paradigm that is different from process work. So energy has particles of energy that vibrate at higher frequencies and resonate at lower frequencies of sadness, depression, hopelessness, abandonment, anger, overwhelm, stress, those are just particles of energy and what I want to suggest to you today that you can actually connect to your feelings and emotions in a way that sees them in that quantum reality as particles of energy. So I'm going to ask you to suggest to your clients, to your family, to your friends, to the kids around you that when they say, I am angry, I am sad, I want you to say, oh, there's energy of sadness running through me. What does it mean? Does it have wisdom? Maybe it's somebody else's sadness you took on as part of you. Maybe it's simply a neurological trigger, the limbic system activating in an old unhealthy pattern, and you need to do what I call take out the trash. Let it go. I can teach you the skills to let to take out the energetic trash, to connect to any painful emotion, challenge, death, event, tragedy in a way that you take out the trash, you transform it back to your spiritual wholeness. You actually use pain as an energetic portal to reconnect to your wholeness. I really want you to open to that possibility. For negative life experience are not meant to abuse us. In the beginning, it may feel like you're climbing Mount Everest without oxygen. It's so hard not to be overwhelmed and merged and self-identified by the pain because you're so used to the old system of process work. I want you to open to the possibility that there is an actual way to connect to the energy of the difficulty you're facing, you're feeling, you're experiencing that negative sense of self that is holding you back, that inner saboteur, in a way that it actually shifts at that quantum level back to wholeness. Or as I tell my students, I'm like, when you take a bath and you let that dirty bath water out, you don't say, oh no, there goes my sense of self. I can't let that dirt go. It's the same thing. I want you to learn not to process the dirt, 
but use the dirt as the seed to grow the flower of who you really are. Because you are so much more, so much more than what you even imagined yourself to be. And that's what this training is really about, is how do you let out that metaphorical dirty bath water and reawaken more of you. And this may not be for you, may not be for everybody. It is for those unique few that want to first do the personal work with themselves and then expand that work as they walk the clients through it. I was at this brain science conference and the leader of the conference was going to show a video and of, of his work with the client. I looked at the picture of the client on the video and I'm like, wow. I know her whole story because I could read her field. And then, you know, the person presenting it, it works with shamans and seemed to be open to the energetic aspects. And I told the story of the client and what was probably going to happen in that session based what I could read on the screen. And he kind of freaked. He's like, oh my God, nobody can do that. That's not possible. So if you're somebody that says nobody can do that, that's not possible, maybe this isn't for you. But if you are curious about how can that be possible, how can it be easy, then maybe this is for you. You may already be sensing energy. And if so, you're going to become a master. Let me support you through this training videos and help you access the gifts I know are already within you. There's something special about you. There's something you were meant to do and bring forth, and I want to help awaken even more skillfulness within you, even more talents. So please stay tuned. I'm going to talk more about this process. Leave comments and questions, for I will read them and respond, because I really want to hear from you, all right? Looking forward to talking with you more.